Chapel friends. I welcome you to our service this week. I've been away for a couple of Sundays, one of those on vacation and one after oral surgery. And I can tell you, I clearly prefer vacation. But it's good to be back with you. I'm healing nicely and looking as normal as I look. This past week was my brother's birthday and I did send a card and a gift. I even asked forgiveness in the card. It said, brother, remember when we were little and I always told you that mom and dad liked me better? Well, since it's your birthday, I wanted to ask your forgiveness. I'm really sorry that mom and dad liked me better. Okay, so that's not really asking forgiveness, but it does give you insight into the ongoing banter between my brother and me. He reminds me every year that no matter how old he is, I'm still older, but I forgive him. Forgiveness, I joke about it here, but true forgiveness is no joke. It's challenging. Forgiveness is the focus of our scripture text and sermon today as we explore Matthew chapter 18, beginning in verse 21 through 35. Hear these words from scripture. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brothers or sisters who sinned against me? Should I forgive as many as seven times? Jesus said, not just seven times, but rather as many as 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle accounts, they brought to him a servant who owed him 10,000 bags of gold. Because the servant didn't have enough to pay it back, the master ordered that he be sold along with his wife and children and everything he owned, and that the proceeds should be used as payment. But the servant fell down, kneeled before him and said, please be patient with me and I will pay you back. The master had compassion on the servant, released him and forgave the loan. When the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him 100 coins. He grabbed him around the throat and said, pay me back what you owe me. Then his fellow servant fell down and begged him, please be patient with me, I'll pay you back. But he refused and said he threw him into prison until he paid back his debt. When his fellow servants saw what happened, they were deeply offended. They came and told their master all that happened. His master called the first servant and said, you wicked servant, I forgave you all of that debt because you appealed to me. Shouldn't you also have mercy on your fellow servant, just as I had mercy on you? His master was furious and handed him over to the guard responsible for punishing prisoners until he had paid the whole debt. My heavenly Father will also do the same to you if you don't forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the gospel. Thanks be to God. There is a Savior What joys express his eyes are mercy, His word is rest. For each tomorrow, for yesterday, there is a Savior who lights our way. Oh, 
forgiven. I've been forgiven. God has looked beyond my sin, saved me from what I might have been, gave me a new life within. I am forgiven by His grace. A senior monk and a junior monk were traveling together when they came to a river with a strong current. As the monks were preparing to cross the river, they saw a very young and beautiful woman attempting to cross. The young woman asked if they could help her cross to the other side. The two monks glanced at each other because they had taken vows not to touch a woman. Then, without a word, the older monk picked up the woman, carried her across the river, placed her gently on the other side, and carried on his journey. The younger monk couldn't believe what had just happened. And after rejoining his companion, he was speechless. And an hour passed without a word between them. Two hours more passed, then three. And finally, the younger monk couldn't contain himself any longer, and he blurted out, As monks, we are not permitted a woman. How can you then carry this woman across the river? The older monk looked at him and replied, Brother, I set her down on the other side of the river. Why are you still carrying her? What are you carrying around with you that you need to let go of? What do you need to forgive? Perhaps a, a past hurt inflicted on you by another, or perhaps even your own failure. We have all faced the question to forgive or not. I wonder what Peter had in mind when he brought up this topic with Jesus. What did Peter need to let go of? Can't you imagine the banter in that conversation? So Jesus, just how many times should I forgive? Like seven? More than that, my friend. Okay, like 17? <laughs> not even close. Wait, okay, 27. Keep going. You're kidding, right? 37? Try 77 times. But that's ridiculous. Impossible. Exactly. We may try to put limits on forgiveness, but with God there is no limit. Jesus is making a point here that forgiveness isn't just a good idea. It is essential in maintaining a healthy relationship with God, with others, and even with ourselves. Jesus is demonstrating that forgiveness is a deep reservoir of grace that never runs dry. Forgiveness is letting go. Our Lord's Prayer reminds us each time we pray it, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Though many faith traditions use the word trespasses here, and it fits, the Greek word used in our Lord's Prayer is actually the same word debt that's used in this particular parable. In his book, Prayers of the Com Cosmos, Neil Douglas Clocks explores this line from our Lord's Prayer as it may have been spoken in the Aramaic language that Jesus spoke on that hillside so long ago. Klotz revealed that the ancient Aramaic uses the imagery of unforgiveness as binding cords, being tied up within ourselves and also keeping us painfully bound to those people that we refuse to forgive. His Aramaic transliteration is, loose the cords of mistakes that bind us. As we release the cords we hold on others' guilt. To forgive 
is to let go of the cords that bind us to the pain and resentment in relationship to others and to ourselves. So you say, but you don't understand. You don't understand what they did to me, how they betrayed me, the way they hurt me to the core. Perhaps I don't understand your particular pain, but I do know in my own life some things are hard to forgive. Yet I've also learned that the only way I can be free is when I forgive, when I let go. If we go through life holding others by the cords of revenge and unforgiveness, ultimately we tie ourselves up in knots. There is a particular verse very meaningful to me found in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25. It's been a powerful image of forgiveness for me. It actually changed my whole perspective on forgiveness several years ago. God is speaking to the people of Israel who have repeatedly rejected God's ways. God says it like this, You have burdened me with your sins and wearied me with your evil actions. But then, then God continues by saying, I, even I, will blot out your transgressions for my own sake and remember your sins no more. Did you catch that? God doesn't forgive us because we deserve it. God forgives for God's own sake. this is so, then we forgive for our own sake. Ultimately, forgiveness, letting go, really has nothing to do with the other person, whether they have apologized, whether they even realize they have done anything to offend us, whether they deserve it or not. Jesus made that pretty clear in his conversation with Peter. As we follow God's example, we forgive for our own sake. And in our willingness to forgive others, our hearts are opened and we can receive the forgiveness God offers to us. We untie ourselves from the pain. It's that simple, yet it's that hard to do. Sometimes we like to hold on to our anger. We like to hold on to our resentment. We think it gives us power, but it's only the perception of power. It's a false perception. Because the surest way to grow bitter is to refuse to forgive. Unforgiveness ultimately takes a physical, emotional, and spiritual toll in our lives. Perhaps in the future I will do a message on what forgiveness is not. But I do want to say here very briefly that forgiveness doesn't mean that you condone the offense of another. Forgiveness doesn't require that you reconcile with someone who has harmed you. Forgiveness doesn't mean that we forget what happened or that we put ourselves in for position for it to happen again doesn't mean those things, but forgiveness is the only way to heal ourselves and be free from past hurts. Without forgiveness, we remain tethered to the person who harmed us. We are bound by our cords of condemnation. And if we hold tight to those cords over time, we are completely drained of our life energy. We become blocked unable to seek or even accept God's forgiveness for others, for ourselves. Of this you can be certain, God always forgives. You are forgiven even now. God's reservoir of forgiveness and grace 
runs infinitely deep. But we must be willing to receive that forgiveness. We can't hold on to God's forgiveness when we are holding the cords of unforgiveness so tightly on someone else. To give and receive forgiveness, we must let go. When Peter came to Jesus and asked him, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? Jesus knew that if Peter refused even once to forgive, it would only harm Peter. If even God forgives for God's own sake, so must Peter. And so must you and I. Certainly, it is a process. Yes, it may take some time, but it begins with that prayer. Forgive me and help me to forgive others. Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who certainly had much to forgive related to apartheid in South Africa, has said, there are those who think an eye for an eye is going to satisfy you. But in the end, you discover that an eye for an eye will leave the whole world blind. There is a saying in the Buddhist tradition, to refuse to forgive someone is like picking up a red hot coal with your bare hand to throw at your enemy. And a favorite saying in AA, is not forgiving is like drinking rat poison and then waiting for the rat to die. In most cases, those who hurt us most are those who are closest to us. We have all been hurt by others. And when we're honest, we know that we have hurt others as well. Some hurts go way back. Many hurts run deep, but healing cannot begin in us until we drop the cord with a desire to forgive. May we become like the older monk, the wiser monk, and set down our burden of unforgiveness to carry on in freedom, thinking of it no more. Pray with me as I offer a prayer written by John Vandelar, a prayer that spoke to me meaningfully this week. Here we are again, O oh God, with all that makes us who we are, all that fills our lives. We carry into this time of joy and freedom the burdens that we just can't seem to lay down the weight of all the scores we long to have settled, the justice we want to demand, the wrongs we have suffered. Yet we also know what would happen if you were to deal with us justly, with our apathy and greeds, our betrayals and lusts. If justice was served in our lives, we could not stand. So forgive us our wrongs, O oh God. Forgive us as we do not deserve. Forgive us against the demands of justice. And forgive our obsession that justice be done to those who have wronged us. May what we take from this time of worship lead us to the place where our hunger for grace and mercy are filled where we may be free from the tyranny of unforgiveness. In Christ we pray. Amen. And now we go from all of our various places into the next thing in our day. But may we go in awareness that we are forgiven. And may we go choosing to forgive. 
with hearts that are lighter because we set down the burden of unforgiveness rather than carrying it in our minds. May we walk in the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.